Hey guys, it's JT Tran, USA's number one Asian dating coach. And today, I have a really special guest, Kevin Kreider, hey TED speaker on Asian masculinity as well as fitness and life coach. Thank you so much for coming in. You are actually now living in Hollywood, aren't you? I am. Nice to see you. <laughs> right. So, for those of you who, you know, the audience who aren't familiar with you, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself and then we'll delve deep into our topic for today, which is Asian masculinity. Sure. First of all, I didn't know you were number one now. <laughs> I've always been congrats, number one. <laughs> congrats on that. <laughs> I've never mentioned that to you. Um, so I'm a fitness life coach. I've been transitioning mostly into mental wellness and nutrition. Mm -hmm. And fitness is my specialty, same with nutrition. But also I've done modeling in the past. And I've also done a little bit of acting. Um, have my own business all online. And I've been going around speaking on Asian masculinity and just sharing my own experience of being an Asian male in America with the stereotypes and how there's a lot of bias and racism towards Asian males and how we can get over that. Gotcha, gotcha. So, the, you know, there was a documentary you were in, like The, the Ugly Model, um, and you, you spoke on redefining Asian masculinity at TED, uh, and then you were also part of like this Huffington Post uh, viral uh, piece about sort of the microaggressions uh, on online dating. So that was pretty cool. Um, now, our topic for today is what is Asian masculinity and how can we represent that for our Asian brothers so that our Asian brothers can embrace it for them? What do you think Asian masculinity, what is your definition of it? I like to think that Asian masculinity is very much like a universal masculinity, but unfortunately mm -hmm. because of the emasculation of Asian men in right. Hollywood and even what's going on right now with uh, the debate whether the people in like K-pop are masculine enough, it's unfortunate, but we have, to, we have a different definition. Mm -hmm. um, we're not ever going to be or maybe we will but right now we're not seen as like the brawny man right or fabio with the long hair <laughs> super jacked and like hyper masculine and right unfortunately though too there's a movement i feel like that that hyper masculinity is kind of going towards the wayside when it's imposed on people mm -hmm. um, and i don't think we as asian men have to reform into that form of like that category of masculinity but what I believe masculinity really is, A, self-awareness, okay. confidence, and purpose, direction. And Correct. if you were to really label all of that down and boil it down, it kind of is just like a human being. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, too, as an Asian male, we have a chance to really rise above what culture considers masculinity. Because, I mean, I feel like Asian people, Asian men especially, in um, society, we have all the skills. I mean, we have the we have the skin, we have the intelligence. <laughs> We're the, the, the full, you know, triple threat. We really are. Yeah. I mean, we really are a great package when we look at it. But if we can just seriously just tap inward mm -hmm. instead of looking for all the outside stuff to make us happy right now gotcha. and confident, I feel like we can just blow up and we can start really redefining our own version of masculinity and have other people be like, oh yeah, there's all all shapes and sizes of, of Asians, not just right. one. Yeah, I mean, you make a really good point. Um, you know, you mentioned like emasculation, and to me, like emasculation is just like gendered code for dehumanization, yeah. right? It yeah. is taking away our humanity that we don't deserve the respect or just of love of people mm -hmm. and so to me Asian masculinity is what you make of it now that's a little meta a little abstract what I mean by that is you get to choose who you want to be whether you want to be like a frat boy or you want to be like a you know gym monkey whether you want to be like super like suave suited up guy like it's your choice but you want to do it with intention and authenticity and integrity. Whatever you want to be, whether it's like, you know, the K-pop star or goth, emo, or again, you know, like kind of skater boy, you know, be that wholeheartedly instead of having it imposed upon you by society, like the emasculation, like, oh, we can only be like generic Japanese salary men or just like flower boys or whatever. Like we have to choose. And I think a lot of guys aren't really aware of that. Like you mentioned mindfulness. Like I think a lot of men, 
Asian men that grow up here, they, we were just forced into a certain box, mm. right? And we just thought that was the way it had to be all the time, right? And to me, it's like, you have to make, you have to know your intention of what kind of man you want to be and to embrace that wholeheartedly. Um, so when it comes to just representing Asian masculinity to our Asian brothers, how do you think we can be or just encourage good representation, whether in ourselves or just like spreading it amongst our community? Definitely. I, uh, well, firstly, I think they're called gym bros, not gym monkeys, right? <laughs> okay. I, I just know because I used to be a gym bros. Right, right. But that's what I, I wanted to share with how to do it um, very skillfully and very mindfully is the sense of there's a lot of also bullying that even comes with a lot of Asian guys who have been bullied. And I'm, I'm talking about my own personal experience, mm -hmm. too, that I was bullied so hard that I went the opposite scale. Yeah. Went to try to be hyper masculine, like mm -hmm. super athletic. I'm going to try to slam every girl that I can, right? Yeah. I'm going to get as big, I'm going to get as ripped and like broish as much as possible. And yes, I will take on a badge of honor when people call me an Asian Chad, right? <laughs> but like, the thing is, that was obviously very toxic for me. Mm -hmm. It was seriously me just feeling super insecure not loving like the person I was in my skin, trying to change all the outside stuff. But then there was a point where it actually did work for a little bit. Yeah. You know, you, you see your body change, you feel good, there's confidence that comes behind it. There's a whole new mindset shift that happens, seeing yourself transform, but then it gets toxic because then you overcompensate. Right, like you don't know what the edge is until you step off of it. Exactly. And then what I realized, my edge was when I started to look down and start bullying other Asian guys mm -hmm. or just totally ignoring them even worse. Yeah. I mean, I see this a lot like in, in YouTube, some of like the comedy is like they're making fun of like Fabi Asians. Like they, they take on like the Asian accent. I'm like, dude, that's so wrong. Like, just, you know, like two thirds of Asians here in America don't speak English as their first language. It's like my parents don't speak English as their first language. They're not, you know, they've got the Fabi accent. So you're right. Like I've seen it and there's like part of me that used to do it like way, way early. But then especially when I got into coaching is like I've got a lot of students that, you know, are completely different types of Asians, yeah. you know, guys that are like the gym bros, guys that are Fabi, guys that are like effeminate, guys that are just like super smart, right? So. You know, it is something I've definitely seen, like, you know, it's not just Western society that's, you know, oppressing us. Sometimes we do it yeah. to or to each other. And I, I gotta even tell you, I've even seen it on the hyper feminine side, right? Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of sometimes uh, Asian men that I've seen who are also hurt because they got bullied for being feminine, but then they're also bullying and trying to impose their view um, on Asian men who they claim to see as like masculine, right? So it's like, it becomes like a reverse bullying. Yeah. My thing is, look, if, if you really just fucking embrace like what you were saying, embrace who you are, mm -hmm. there's no reason to bully this other person. There's yeah. no reason to impose my shit like, yo, bro, you gotta gain 20 more pounds, you know? <laughs> so take like, that creatine. Yeah, yeah. Take Get that, that whey protein. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm not, like, why, why can't you grow facial hair? Where'd your hair facial hair go, you know? Like, I'm not, you're not a man now. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's yeah. like, really, I mean, I go through phases of how I like to look, you know? Some mm -hmm. days I really like having facial hair. Some days I'm like, no, I kind of like a clean shaven. Yeah. Why do I have to choose one? It's like, it really fucking just yeah. matters how I feel. Right. And that's what I was saying earlier, our masculinity is what we choose. And I think, you know, a, a good recent sort of example was Crazy Rich Asians and the fact that it had a very wide array of representations of Asian guys from like the male kind of like Asian Ryan Gosling guy to the best friend that was like very honest and moral to like the, the, the frat boy to like the Wall Street douchebag to the military guy. So whether it was like good or bad, it was a wide representation. And so, you know, being able to choose how we represent ourselves. It's, it's our choice, and I think embracing that is really important. Um, let me get to some quick reader audience questions that were submitted. Um, this was actually, the first one is from Allison, a female reader. She was asking, do you think having self-hatred hurts a relationship? That is an absolute yes, Allison. Mm -hmm. Self-hatred does hurt a relationship. 
I've experienced it. Almost every one of my relationships I've had in the past have ended because of self-hatred. It became more about me and how insecure I was mm -hmm. because I hated who I was and hated everything that even seeing an Asian person on TV represented and I hated that. And you can't escape it. Mm -hmm. No matter how much you try to hide being Asian or self-hatred, you can't really run away from it. So my self-hatred was my identity as an Asian male. Some other people's or other things, right? Sometimes it's your religion or maybe if you're gay and you just have a lot of self-hatred. Yeah, right? body image. Body image, whatever. Mm -hmm. That is a total projection on the relationship yeah. and that you put on someone else. And it's unconscious, actually. Yeah. That's the worst part is that it's unconscious. Sometimes it comes across to me, it seems like as narcissism mm -hmm. and it can, it can be narcissistic. But the thing is you're so unconscious cause you're so wrapped up in self and self hatred that you can't really see what the other person is in need of, you know, like yeah. sometimes the other person just wants love and respect. And my thing is I'm like, well, you're not respecting me. And it's like, well, it's because I have this deep down, super insecure, whatever. Yeah problem i have that the relationship just suffers right you're projecting your own insecurity oh. into it and i didn't really know what that meant but like for instance so my insecurity back then my self-hatred was like well i felt like i was second best to a white guy mm -hmm. so my ex-girlfriend whatever white guy she was around especially if they had any type of relationship before i would project like well maybe she's sleeping with this person but then i'm like uh-huh no, Kev, that's my own insecurity because mm -hmm. I didn't feel like, I felt like second best to a white guy. I mean, mm. it didn't really matter how he looked or what he was doing. And it didn't matter how much my ex-girlfriend tried to reassure me and be like, no, no, you don't understand. I prefer Asian guys. I yeah. just felt like that was bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, just from all the past baggage and the self-hatred I carried on within me. And she could hear in my voice. She literally told me it's not what you said it's how you say it it just sounds so angry and so right right and that was going in me that was like what was in my soul she said so i had to clear that up to be able to you know my self-hatred and that so i could actually be in other healthy relationships yeah i mean as the old saying goes is you know before you're happy with someone else you have to be happy with you and who you are um i actually you know actually, i think that's the number one cause of self-hatred yeah is when you're looking for a partner to make you happy. Yeah. And, and super, like, like, you need a prestigious girlfriend to be something or something. Right, right. Like, you're the girl's your purpose instead of you having yeah, your own purpose. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the thing is, like, I get it a lot of students that felt the same way. It's like they are second best to, you know, to white guys. Um, you know, I was curious, like, Danny, you know, when he went to Europe, he, he, we did this, this thing called the Euro Tour, which is what I like to call, like, the number one inner game uh, experiential event for Asian guys. And that was one of his biggest limiting beliefs was like he is second best to white guys. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Europe and like, you know, like the first night there, there was some blonde girl that was like literally like, are you Filipino? Like she wanted an Asian guy. Like that never happens in America. But anyways, that was like, uh, I digress. Um, so yeah, definitely self-hatred can obviously it hurts a lot, you know, and it is something that takes time to deal with. I know that you're big on mindfulness. Um, I would also say, what was the fan's name again? Allison. Allison. Yeah. Allison um, if you are still dealing with someone that you care about mm -hmm. with this, just to know it's not your fault. It, no, you have no. nothing to do with this. Um, it's really them. They're projecting. They're projecting and it's unfortunate, but it's almost like talking to a drunk and telling them when you're drinking too much, they're only going to get more angry about it. Yeah. So all you can really do is you will love them is to really love them and guide them yeah. and to not really impose what you want on them too. And it might fall, it might fall apart and it mm -hmm. might be good. And hopefully you can end on a good note. So when that person does get better and isn't self hating so much and is helping himself first, instead of looking for you to help him, then hopefully you can get back into that relationship. Right, right. And there are resources, whether it's mine or whether it's Kevin, um, that focus 
specifically on Asian guys and like helping them deal with their identity issues. Way more JT than mine. <laughs> well, we, we cover different bases, yeah. right? Um, because like again, Asian masculinity is the entire gamut, right? It's very wide and we, you know, we each have our different uh, specializations. So another question, uh, I forget the name, is he wanted to know what is your diet routine? Oh, <laughs> like, what, what do you eat to look so good? I, you know, I've actually been, what I eat to look good and to feel good are, are two totally different things. So for instance, if I just eat, cause I do flexible dieting, you can look it up on my YouTube channel and everything mm -hmm. if you want to know what that is. And I combine it with intermittent fasting. Okay. I find that when I combine those two, I can lose weight very quickly and I can still look good and I can still eat a lot of good foods that I want. Mm -hmm. um, pancakes are one of my favorite foods in the world. If you're any of my friends or girls I've dated, you'll know that because I cook it all the time. And people think I don't eat that kind of stuff, but I do, especially on a, especially on a weekly basis. The other thing is that I've been incorporating is a lot of greens like sauteed spinach because obviously when you cook it, it releases a lot more nutrients and it's more mm -hmm. bioavailable. And I've been adding a lot more olive oil and coconut oil because that's also been shown to be good for your brain, especially with your spinach that you put in there. And I just stick to mostly real good food. I mean, okay. like most of the time, whenever I do go out to eat, I'll just make sure it's not fried, um, unless it's French fries once in a while. That is something that I do. <laughs> but really, I eat what I like and what I want and for my taste buds, but I keep it within a moderation, obviously. Okay. So you have to know where your limit is and when your where your energy balance is for you to be able to eat whatever it is you want. And you really just need to stay consistent. If, gotcha. you're not, if you're just doing this once a week, it's obviously not going to work for you. It has to become a lifestyle. And how I made it a lifestyle was that I replaced my bad habits with good ones. Mm -hmm. So instead of eating crappy food, I would maybe eat like these bagged delicious good foods like um, these pop chips that are going around, these coconut chips, and they just taste really good. But then I also have to be able to do something like go to the gym if I need to, or have a program or a plan whenever my mind starts playing games on me and, and I, I need to emotionally eat. So I'll replace that with working out or some right. type of home program. Basically what you're saying is, is not just the diet. Oh, right, right. <laughs> it's all, Sorry. it's the entire thing. I totally <laughs> went off the tangent, but, but no, no, you're absolutely right. You know, cause some guys, whether it's dating or fitness, they, they fix it on just one thing of like, right. I could just fix this one thing, then my life will change. If I just like, if I knew the exact things right. to eat, you know, but it's always like the entire holistic, you know, big picture plan. If you were to really just choose one though, mm -hmm. and you could follow one to the T, it would really literally be nutrition. Nutrition. Really it is okay. a whole lot of nutrition. And like, let's just say your mindset didn't have anything to do with nutrition. Okay. You could just literally say, oh, that's all I have to do and I'll do it, yes. You could literally just follow a good nutrition plan and get a lot of the results you want. Now to tip it over the edge to have outstanding results, like something that's just like, bam, that's Instagram post. Right? <laughs> then the exercise is. Right, right, right. Cool, cool. Having those crazy rich Asian abs, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and lastly, um, is this is, you know, I, I was debating whether even to bring this up because sometimes like certain questions tend to feed into negativity, but I'll bring it up anyway. What do you think about the trend of flower boys uh, like in Asia, like the K-pop, uh, J-pop, you know, like the, the Asian bangs and that form of more quote unquote like feminized masculinity and how it affects us like Asian masculinity in the West. So I hope you don't edit what I'm about to say because mm -hmm. it's a two part. First okay. of all, I, um, as someone who isn't like that, I often can sometimes get to a point where I'm like, Ugh, I can't believe that's what people <laughs> are going to see as Asian and sexy. But then I remember, I mean, I've been in the modeling industry for a very yeah. long time. And so it goes in cycles. It's every like five, six years, the skinny effeminate male is considered high fashion and beautiful. Then six years later, it's like the beefcake. It's literally the guy who has a lot of muscle and is hyper masculine and uh, that is what's in, you know? So my thing with that is that overall looking at it, even though it's not my style, 
I personally think it's very good for Asians because gotcha. it's at least getting their attention. And right. now someone like us or someone who is hypermasculine Asian guy or just not like a flower boy is whatever they call it. I never heard of that term, but I see that as like a gateway. It's an opening for us now because now they see as Asian men as even sexy to begin with. It doesn't matter what it is, right? And then then we can pop in and show them a new viewpoint of, yeah. if you think this is sexy, this is too. Yeah, you know, get them on the gateway drug yeah. <laughs> and then show them the full buffet of Asian, of Asian manhood. They call it the lowest hanging fruit. Like yeah. if that's the lowest hanging fruit with them, then eat it, you know, yeah, and yeah. then we'll, we can show you other stuff. You know, it is, it, that form of, like, again, yeah, very familiar with it, and it's kind of like, eh. Um, there's been definitely a movement, you know, where it has sort of flooded American uh, society where more people are aware of it. And I do know online there are, like, weeaboos, right? Just girls that, like, really find that look um, almost fetishized, so you will find some girls. I will say that if, you know, any of you guys watching it, it is a look, it's very polarizing. You know, you'll get girls that are like instantly, yes or no. Yeah. Like, yes or no. It's a small percentage, <laughs> right? But at least you'll know from, like, right from the get-go if she finds that look attractive, right? It's not for every single Asian guy, quite frankly. It's a look that tends to only really work for Asian girls and girls who are really into um, that sort of overseas Asian fashion and style. It's not really universal. Like so anime-ish too. Yeah, it's not really universal if you want to get, you know, date like a white girl, black girl, a Latin girl, right? But again, the most important principle at play is it's polarizing, right? You get an instant yes or no from a girl. Like you know from the bat, where you stand with her, she finds you attractive or not attractive. Okay, so hopefully we answered a lot of questions, um, talked about Asian masculinity and help you guys will embrace what you choose with genuineness, authenticity, integrity. What is Asian masculinity for you? All right, Kevin, um, any last words and how can they find out more about you? Sure, uh, my last words is I hope you can take any of this information uh, that JT and I gave you and if it doesn't apply to you now, hopefully it might apply to you later because sometimes you're just not at that point in your life yet to even process any of this. Mm -hmm. So this will be around and hopefully you can come back to this in maybe a year or two, maybe five, it makes sense to you. So take what you need. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram. It's my name, Kevin, period, Kreider, K-R-E-I-D-E-R. -E -E and then it's the same on my website without the period, KevinKreider.com. And you can find me on YouTube, Kevin Kreider. Okay, we'll put it also in the YouTube description. Oh, so be I sure, <laughs> so be sure to check him out. All right, Kevin Kreider, speaker on Asian masculinity and fitness and life coach. All right, guys, thanks so much. Be sure to subscribe because we got more great shit coming for you. All right, bye, guys. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it, and make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun in-field pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.